Hello everybody, Robert Russell here. Today is uh, April the 17th. It's about 9.51 on a Friday morning central time. Um, wanted to talk to you today about a topic that a lot of people do not want to discuss, um, but it's called the fear of making phone calls. Now, this topic is very real. Um, it's a real situation. There's a lot of people that could be really successful on the phone, whether you're selling insurance or real estate or cars or vinyl siding or even vacuum cleaners. Now, um, of course, I would never do vacuum cleaners because that would be way too hard for me. <clears throat> but let's talk specifically about um, selling insurance or about real estate. You know, for the last 35 years, I have had my insurance license. I have trained probably over a thousand people in the 35 years. One of the main topics that I've always had with people, even when I first started, was people didn't want to get on the phone because they had a fear of calling, which is, um, for me, kind of foreign because I realized that when you're making phone calls that the other person can't see you. So it's a very safe environment as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, they can get pissed off, but the beautiful thing is is that you can hang up on them if they get pissed off and, and rude. There's two reasons why people don't wanna make phone calls. Number one, they don't know what to say. Um, or they're afraid that the other person will say something and they don't know how to respond. The other, pro the other problem is that they don't have enough people to call. They've got a list of leads of maybe 50 leads and they're afraid if they burn through 10 that they will only have 40 left and they're afraid of continuing because if they burn through that list, now they're unemployed. Well, the number one problem, the fear of calling and not knowing what to say, that can be easily overcome. The other one, the fear of leads, that also can be easily overcome if you know where to get them. So let's go a little bit deeper on the fear of calling. You know, um, back about, uh, back in 2007, I went to a self-help program um, for myself because I felt like there was some things that I needed to address back from my childhood that, you know, I was uh, dug in deep and I wouldn't let anybody in. I had this wall. I wouldn't let people in. I wouldn't open up to them. And um, what I found out was that there was issues that I was dealing with personally that needed to come out. I think if, if you're dealing with issues back from your childhood, it's because of the way you were raised. You know, there's a lot of people that were raised that their father or mother told them that they weren't good enough. So they have a very low self-esteem. Um, or you were afraid of, uh, or you had so much perfection in your house that your parents demanded uh, and instilled perfection on you. So you have a fear of calling because you feel like if you're not perfect at this calling game, that you won't succeed. So there's a lot of issues that are deep inside you that you need to overcome. And one of the things you need to understand is that your past, how you were raised, how your father treated you, how your mother treated you, how your brothers or sisters treated you, You've got to get over that. You've got to get over your past. Now, when I say you've got to get over it, many of you that are watching this are probably saying, oh yeah, easier said than done. I had this happen to me. Well, I do understand. I had a radio show called Ask Robert J. Russell that I recently started back. And the purpose of that radio show was to interview people who have overcome obstacles in their life and how they use that obstacle to help other people. 
So there was people that would call me and they say, well, I've got this obstacle that I've overcome. And I said, well, what have you done to help other people with that obstacle? And, you know, they tell me, well, I've done nothing. And I tell them, well, I'm sorry, then I can't have you on my show. You know, the whole reason for getting over an obstacle is to get out of yourself and quit thinking about you and use that obstacle to help other people. I had a friend, uh, his name is Danny Cahill. Danny was on 2008, The Biggest Loser. Uh, go back and, and look at YouTube videos and look at Danny Cahill. I believe when Danny started The Biggest Loser TV show, he weighed around, I think, 450, 460. Big fellow. And one of the obstacles that he had to deal with uh, was something that I'm not going to put on YouTube but he had his own obstacles to overcome. At the end of six months, he went down to, I believe, 183, something crazy like that. So look it up, Danny Cahill. Now, the other obstacle that some of you um, might have to deal with, I, I dealt with a lady one time who was severely overweight. I mean, like, in a massive way. And the obstacle that she had, had to overcome is when she was a child, she had been raped as a child. And so her way to medicate herself was to eat and become unattractive so that nobody would ever look at her or touch her again. She was doing self-medication that was literally killing her body. So when I talk about fear, it's much deeper than being afraid of rejection over the phone. It goes back from your past and how you deal with that past and what you're gonna do to overcome that past. So many of you who, who think, oh yeah, I can get on the phone. Here's the, the question for you, because I talk to agents all the time. Can you handle 700 no's a day? I mean, you don't understand what 700 no's in a day is. That's a lot of no's. You know, I talk to people that say, oh yeah, I can do 700 no's. Well, until you've done it, you really can't say you can do it. You've got to have extremely thick skin and ask yourself, why are you doing this? Is it really that important for you to do it? And then my question that I ask them is what's your, what's your plan B? If you don't want to make phone calls and sit on the phone and work from home, what's your plan B? Do you want to go knock on doors and sell insurance? Do you want to go to appointments and be stood up on appointments? Do you want to spend thousands of dollars on leads that are crap? I don't. So number one, you've got to overcome your fear, whether it's from your past or whatever it is. If you need to go see a counselor, go do it. But you've got to overcome your past, period, before you can start. The other thing is you need to know what, to say, what you're going to say on the phone. That involves practice. The reason that I'm good on the phone is because after 35 years, I've heard just about everything you can imagine by making seven to 800 cold calls a day. I've heard it all in 35 years. None, none of the objections have changed. They're all the same. You still get the dumb, the dumb responses. I've got all the insurance I need. I'm insurance poor. Um, I can't afford insurance. I mean, whatever it is, it's the same objections. They don't change. There's about 10 or 15 of the same stuff you're going to hear. And if you hear the same objections every single day, you will become really good at knowing what to say because you've heard that before. So here's my steps on what to do to prepare yourself to make 
cold calls to overcome your fear. Number one, you need to call somebody that you know first thing and talk to them on the phone and say, hey, you're going to be my practice. I'm calling because I'm fixing to make phone calls and I need to talk to you. And don't spend more than two or three minutes with them. Get off the phone. Number two, create some sort of, um, I don't want to say script, but know what you're going to say before you call them. You want to talk to them, not at them. What I can't stand is I have people call me and they say, can you send me your script? And I say, okay, here's, so here's what you're asking me to do. Hello, this is Robert Russell. I want to talk to you about insurance. And you're reading to them. They know you're reading to them. I talk to people who call me and, you know, they're telemarketers. And I say, whoa, whoa, stop. I want you to quit reading to me. I want you to talk to me. And they'll continue on and keep it. I said, whoa, you're still reading. Talk to me. Talk to me as a person. And that's what these people are dealing with when you call them. You're reading from a script. Talk to them. Talk to them, not at them. Number three, you got to rehearse. You've got to keep making calls. Yeah, you're going to suck at the beginning. Everybody does. But as you practice, you're going to get so much better on the phone. You know, if you, another thing you can do too is get up. You don't need to sit. You can get up and walk around. It's real simple to do. Just, you know, get some earbuds like this, put them in your ears, and walk around while you're on the phone. Another thing, smile. If you have a serious face, they can see it. When I used to train agents uh, at Life of Georgia, when I first started, I made them have a mirror on their desk so that they could see themselves. And it was amazing when they looked at themselves in the mirror, they became much better on the phone because their facial expression came through on the phone. So here's some things I want you to work on to practice. I want you to subscribe to my video, to this video channel, because I'm going to address many things that can help you to be better on the phone. Um, you know, a lot of people are running around wondering what's going to happen with this coronavirus. But here's the thing. If you're in insurance, there's no wondering what you should be doing. This is it. People right now are looking to save money. Use that as your approach. Um, call them and ask them if they're willing to talk to you about saving money on their insurance. If they say, no, I don't want to save money, then A, you don't have a good prospect. Hang up, move on. But if you've got somebody that wants to save money, you've got a great prospect to talk to. Um, but if you're wondering, should I go get a job working for somebody else? Well, if that's what you want to do and you want to be somebody's boy and you want them to tell you what to do, where to go, what time to go to lunch, what time to go back from lunch, what time to take your break, what time to come back from your break, um, what time to go home, what time you're going to be there in the morning. And if you got to call in sick, you got to wonder, am I going to get fired for calling in sick too much? That is crap. You need to work for yourself. You be the boss. My dad told me one time, actually when I was 10 years old, he told me, just remember, the person, the person that signs your check is the same person that makes the rules. That hit me big time. As a 10-year-old, that hit me big time. Because I remember thinking, at age 10, I don't want anybody making the rules on me. I want to make my own rules. So I started mowing yards. And I decided if I'm going to mow yards, I'm going to do it first thing in the morning before all my friends are up. 
because they usually get up at 9 o'clock. So I'm going to start mowing yards at 7.30. By 9 o'clock, I'm done. Everybody's just now getting out. I've already made money for the day, and I'm done. So remember that. This is today's words of wisdom. The same person that writes your check is the same person that makes the rules. So y'all subscribe to this video series. I'm going to be making more videos about calling people. Uh, we're going to do some role-playing sessions. Uh, you don't want to miss my role-playing sessions because they are powerful and in your face. Role-play. It ain't. I don't go easy on people because you would rather me go hard on you in practice than have a potential client go hard on you and you blow the whole deal. So uh, subscribe to the videos. And if you have any questions for me and you want to find out about my system that has worked for now over 250 people all over the United States, call me. 972-679-9029. Y'all have a great day. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye now.